September 17th, uh, 2018. Uh, entertain a motion to adopt those minutes. I would make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. I second. Mr. Uh, <coughs> Hollister seconds. Any further discussion regarding adoption of those minutes? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Uh, I have a last minute addition for minutes of the special meeting of uh, September 22nd, 2018, uh, held 12 o'clock noon. This place right here, where we adopted resolution 2018-44. Um, let's see who who we have to do that. Oh, I guess Mr. Crockett moved and Mr. Hoster seconded for that, and we adopted that by voice vote. This is a motion to adopt the set of amendments. Yes. Mr. Crockett moves. I'll second. Second, second discussion. <coughs> May we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Okay, Margaret, I wanted to let you know that that was resolution. It's very uh, faint on there, but that's resolution 44. Oh, so. Which is the same number, so we're going to go to 45, I assume, on All right. what we have That tonight. seems logical. All right. Be logical. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and consistent. And keep there things in order there. Now move for adoption of payment bills in the amount of $46,451.62. Broken down general fund, 6454.05. Fire fund, 25460 excuse me, 496.23. Cemetery, $2,574.45. EMS billing, $8,067.09. Capital projects, is zero. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? I so move. Mr. Moves, is there a second? second Mr. Crockett sec seconds. Any further discussion regarding the payment of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. We're writing correspondence from the period. <coughs> a substantially large packet from regional planning about what happened at the meeting last week. A um, citizen's advisory from the Ohio EPA regarding uh, the uh, application of biosolids and the treatment facility in Green County. Um, some information back and forth about the bid documents uh, for the new Oops. firehouse, which, which I'm excited to report. And it's a little report here coming up soon. Um, a phone message or an email message to Inspector Zoff about Picking up the messages. I had already done it, I just had cleaned up. That's it. All right, well, you're cleaned up now. That's what I like to see. A, uh, a message to uh, uh, Fisk Officer, Officer Sullivan from Charles E. Harrison Associates. Very important message. A notice from uh, uh, Melissa Howell regarding public meeting for the health department. Um, notice. Uh, for an EFC, ESC meeting on uh, the third Wednesday, seven o'clock. Um, will you be able to attend? You know, mm -hmm. is that on your? Yeah, that's good. A, uh, uh, economic sustainable. Oh, yeah. uh, if I may stop for yes. just a second, uh, I have the list of the current correspondence on the computer, and I forgot to move it onto. The agenda. So this is all last meeting's agenda listed here in case anybody's oh, wondering one, what oh. Chris is talking about. <laughs> I'm getting lost. This is, yeah, okay, here's why you're, you're not lost. I'm just letting you know. No. Okay. So go ahead. All right, I'm so excited. So, yeah. I have the most favorite piece of correspondence for the period and has been for a while. And this is directly for um, Trustee Hollister. I will, I will let you <laughs> uh -oh. receive it. <coughs> 
<coughs> Gracious. Is this embarrassing? <laughs> no. This is from Auditor of State Dave Yost, mm -hmm. um, who is currently in an election campaign. True. Uh, you won't hold that against him? What am I? I was going to say, some people. You are ridiculing me. This is. I'm, I'm not ridiculing you. <laughs> <laughs> This is regarding Government Accounting Standards Board Statement number 75. Is this really relevant to something we've discussed mm -hmm. before? Keep going. I don't know what he said. Accounting and financial reporting for post-employment benefits other than pensions. Speed me up. This is a statement. This is an invoice for us. How much do we owe David Yost? This doesn't say anything about it. That's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I got another one though. This is on, hold the this phone. Is on <laughs> video. Hold the phone. I got another one. Oh, no. there, there are two. <laughs> now I really want to read this. <laughs> the next one. Yeah. Now I have a, I have a <laughs> correspondence <laughs> that I'm sure Mr. Hollister will Appreciate. enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Your <laughs> new monthly billing statement from Auditor of State is now available online. Uh, go <laughs> to monthly blah, 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 account summary, account balance zero, due date 10 2018. I thought that would be music to your ears. Thank you. <laughs> but now I, 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 sending us this will be a segue everybody. into something I'm bringing up later. Oh, <laughs> uh, All right. Auditor. <laughs> no. <laughs> that must have just come this afternoon. Yes, it did. Uh, I had a, uh, an email from Carolyn and Stephanie regarding the uh, reason to put together resolution 2018-44, which we did and, and passed. We also have in the normal monthly Ohio Association Legislative Alerts. We have a um, message from Otarma about the can, election of can we back up Certainly. and just make some public reference to the reason for that? special meeting and resolution mm -hmm. that it was to avail ourselves of possible uh, portion of money for roads through the uh, county engineer's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Engineer Geyer uh, so decided to uh, give up his portion, up to 70% of his portion of monies received from the Motor Vehicle License Fund uh, of the state of Ohio and share those proportionally with the townships uh, and villages uh, in Greene County. Um, but there's, a, there's a, a method in which that had been done and one of them was the townships and the villages had to request that money. <clears throat> excuse me, be distributed to them. That request had to go to the Greene County Commissioners uh, before October 1st to be uh, decided on. Uh, and I, I haven't heard whether they uh, they approved uh, uh, Bob Barrett's request or not. Hopefully they did. And, um, and then that money will be distributed from, uh, from the auditor. So hopefully that's the case. How much is that likely to be? It's probably somewhere in the $1,500 to $2,000 range. Because we're currently getting 30% and we're going to get 100%? And well, we're going to get we get a, there's a separate amount already on the books. We get. Yeah, I know we get some money mm -hmm. from that tax. It's more like $7,000. Not, okay, well, not it's, it's not worth fussing about right now. I was just, I was thinking, oh, if we're getting 30%, then we're going to get three, you know, three times as much. But if we're budgeted at maybe five. it doesn't work that way. Budgeted at five. Mm -hmm. so, so it could be significant. We shall see. Um, I guess we could, I don't know if I have anything else on that information, but uh, I just want to confirm that the county commissioners intend to begin this grant program uh, in 2019 and 
will divide um, half a million dollars through all the political subdivisions in Greene County, 325,000 for the townships and villages, 175,000 for the cities, and it will be proportional on a per capita basis, forced out to be $6.33 for each man, woman, and child who was uh, counted in the 2010 census. And our portion of that, um, as I recall, works out to be we will receive a check for approximately $8,200 first of the year. Uh, we don't have to apply for it. We don't have to uh, do anything. We just have to open the check up. And so the commissioners are feeling flush enough to do what the state used to do, mm -hmm. which is support local government. Yeah. Uh, uh, except we got a lot more from the state. Oh, well, I know it's not It's not going to make up for it, but it's along the same lines. One government entity <coughs> gave money to another government yeah. entity. The only thing they're asking is we let them know what we use the money for. Oh, so um, you have to specifically budget it for certain <coughs> purposes. Yeah. You can't just general fund it. Oh, uh, we could. You could say, oh, you can't. Okay, because we're going to use it for We could for operating expenses. Mm -hmm. um, they're encouraging us to use it, number one, wisely, and to, to somehow use it to leverage yeah, additional hard. funds mm -hmm. through matching well, funds, okay. uh, through a 20% share, you know, this, that, and the other thing, to go in with other, other townships or villages or something and leverage and able to do it that way. And, and they're saying that will encourage them to continue the, the grant program oh. in years to come. If, if you could double this, we'll, we'll keep giving it to you. Yeah. Well, I uh, just wish that, that, that they would um, make some statement as to where the money comes from, because they you take it me. from you and me, and uh, they never say that. I thought, I thought they said sales tax. Yeah, sales tax, casino tax. I think they oh, get a little not property. property. Yeah. I, it's a little they keep, property, they keep, a, they keep a, little a little credit property tax okay. for their own operation. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get, I don't know, they, they have both inside and outside mills. Mm -hmm. kind of yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an Otarma newsletter. Um, an interesting set of uh, back and forth from uh, DMS Inc. about the postcards that we're going to put out. Had a, had a message from them that I didn't print out. I forgot to, I'm sorry. But uh, I had told Jim Kroger, who's our account executive, that uh, we agreed to you know, to go with the package. And he said, fine. And, and he was going to have our, a, a new customer pack sent to us so we could fill it out, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I did. I filled everything out. I sent it back. And a couple days later, I never heard from him. And I said, did I miss you know, filling something out? Or is there something else I need to do? He comes back and he says, well, he says, since, since you didn't fill out one portion of the customer or the new customer package, uh, we can't issue credit. So unless you pay for everything up front, you know, we can't do business with you. And didn't he ask for some sort of what portion was uh, it filled? Well, this was Assurance before. Yeah, this was before that. that. Okay. Yeah, this was before that. Yeah. So I, I sent him a, a cryptic little email, something along the lines of. Well, since we're a political sub, a governing political subdivision of the state of Ohio, I guess I could give you the references of, of John Kasich and Josh Mandel. Um, you know, and I think we have a hundred and twenty million dollar carryover, so I, I think we could probably cover the eight, six or eight hundred dollars that we were. Um, well, it was references that you could that yeah. you asked for yeah. that you didn't give them. I see. So he comes back and says, "Well, I've consulted with my sales manager, and if, and if someone other than you." I'm not sure why it's someone other than me writes me a letter saying that uh, you have the money and you have encumbered fund, encumbered the funds for this purpose and blah 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 and regardless you have to pay for the postage up front because this is just a pass through and I, don't know, I just I'm trying to be uh, you know, there are other companies that <laughs> provide this service. Know, but it's a nice little efficient yellow space company. Like mm -hmm. So, so Margaret is going company. to write the little letter. You're right. At some mm -hmm. point. Oh, you're going to get. You're going to be our reference. Very I just soon. found out. Very soon. Well, I can send you the. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't think of it. I had to do that. <laughs> you thought that. I oh, thought your other thing suffice. I thought we were. It was. Your other comments were. Uh -huh. Okay, anywho, well, 
If I put it on my two honey do list. Yeah. It sounds like charge the uh, firefighters association that gave them credit for that problem. <laughs> I don't think Jeremy had any problems. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how did you guys pass to get, to get through all that? <laughs> so we did pay for postage up front. Well, I'm going to send them a copy of our concept. Don, I'm sorry. Somehow I missed a bill with the post office. I missed uh, printing out the email that you had sent about your uh, discussion at Farm Science Review. I was going to bring and, that up. Um, and as I say, that was very interesting. And I remember Dale Arnold from the from the Seedville Township uh, Association, his, his cogent two-hour discussion on uh, all things energy. And, you know, I, you know, if you think there's some meat to that, uh, why don't you go ahead and meet with them and, and get the bullet points? Do you want me to bring this up on our new business, or if you want to bring that up on the new business, that'd be fine. Okay, I will. Because I have a little more to say. Okay. All right. Any further correspondence this evening? <coughs> any new business this evening? Usually new business. Oh, okay. okay. New business. <laughs> wow, we're just so in. Oh, wait. Who's winning this show? It's like a Lamar meeting. We got rid of the pesky report. We have new business at the end of the agenda. <laughs> 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 so Dale Reed meeting, actually. <laughs> no, Dale Arnold. Back in the Dale Reed days, 17 minutes. That was the longest meeting we had. He <laughs> <laughs> was proud of that. So, what's next on the agenda? The longest? No. The fire department. So my first year, yeah. 17 minutes is mm. the longest trusted meeting we had. Because he had somewhere to get to. Yeah. We were, His beer is getting colder with that. We were, I was going to say that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you it's, it's local lore. <laughs> that was the longest or the shortest? What was the longest? We had like 10 minute meetings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so yeah, we ran all too. So. I would Dave, like to save the new business for the end. Dave Hellman and. Who are the other ones? Roger. 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 Roger Larry. Oh, yeah. anyway. No, when Larry got here, maybe he's got one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to pop right into the fire department meeting so we can, uh, we can get through get to the new business. It's, yeah, the new business. <laughs> Since the last meeting, we've had 33 EMS calls, uh, 17 fire calls, Jeez. and we've done put that eight fire safety inspections. What I'm trying to say. Uh, next week is National Fire Prevention Week. I think it's next week. Um, but whether or not it is, time to change your batteries. Yes, change your batteries. Thank you. Good. Put some batteries on. Very good, Richard. <laughs> I thought I learned my I lesson. Remember, wanted to give you a All sticker. <laughs> uh, but yes, it is. Uh, it will be time to change your smoke detector batteries. What are you going to do now that the smoke detectors are all going to lithium one time? Smoke <laughs> <laughs> change your smoke detector. <laughs> mm. First alert's going to be big on that one. Um, so we're going to do an open house type event. Uh, you probably fire engine ones. Yes. Uh, on Friday, October 12th. So we'll keep you posted. Hot dogs? Uh, possibly. Not sure the Jason's here. Imported from the. Sam's? No. What was the restaurant? I forgot already. Oh, uh, oh Senate. Senate, yeah. <laughs> okay. It was a zombie dog. It was just coming to the hot dogs for us. If I open a house, really easy. <laughs> and then, of course, the next day is Street Fair. And we'll be there, you know, in whatever force I can muster in these days. <laughs> I mean, I know they didn't be there. And, and Alex is working, so well, Alex and Ryan. So be four of us. Oh, Jason already said he'd work, so that's fine. But I'll see what else I. I'll shake the tree and see what else falls out. Um, you'll notice in the bills, or maybe you didn't, but um, we paid our volunteer reimbursement for the quarter, and it was oh, I know. Uh, six thousand seven hundred eighty-nine dollars, which I think is an all-time low. So. Uh, is that because there are fewer volunteers, or there are fewer fires? It's because there are significantly fewer volunteers. Yes. No. The numbers are the same. Um, and we've got more paid staff yeah. that are covering calls, um, which hopefully we can back off. Well, at least, that, you know, at least it's helping some. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, at least we're answering calls. That's, a, that's right, the important right. thing. Right, I mean, it's knocking down the cost of our volunteers. Yeah. Anyway. That's why we can reappropriate to have uh, Senate from Cincinnati come up and make hot dogs for us <laughs> during the open house. Uh, anyway, uh, the only other thing, oh, well, and there's, there's a bill in there, just, I think I mentioned this to you last time, if I did, just throw something at me. Um, <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. Ah, uh, bill for twenty-five hundred um, Somalians. Saw that. Um, and that's for a forcible entry training door that we're going to purchase. 
uh, in a joint purchase with suitable township. So. Where's it going to live? Uh, in Clifton. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even farm house. So this is a door you can break through repeatedly? Yes. Yeah, the problem, that's actually the, the most difficult thing for us to train on is because, you know, most people don't want us to break their doors in. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and we've done, like, interpretive dance and simulations, but it doesn't work as well. So this is, uh, Clark State just brought, bought three of these, unfortunately that one for us. But, uh, but it's a metal door, and you can continue this multiple different ways. The guys can force entry through it and everything and practice that skill. Um, so. Hey, you uh, force entry. <laughs> uh, we have multiple different tools that you'd use depending on the door style. Yeah, you always try it first. Try before you pry is the most important thing. <laughs> yeah, see if it's unlocked. I learned that lesson. But don't you way. tend to bust the thing up as you do it? Yeah, I mean, I don't understand how you um, keep These doing have it. Uh, replaceable parts that are the parts that break. Oh. And then you get one year free. I mean, it's usually like wood parts or little metal parts that are easy to break. So. In other words, when you train people to break the things that you can replace. Well, I, would, I would like to attend one of the sessions. Does Once it was a string of break-ins, and you all scream. Does it come with a battery? Right <laughs> no, it works. Nice. Yeah, I think Cedar will have one of those. But, um, but then Nate will travel to Cedarville next month um, to get the money out of their firefighters association. Ours already ponied up 2000 so. bucks. Um, I, I have a question. In this era of battery-operated tools, couldn't you have a battery-operated circular saw with an abrasive blade and cut through any kind of bolt or latch? Just like we that. have those. Yeah. Uh, they don't work on every door. It depends on the door style. Um, and then we also try, I mean, uh, you can actually do less damage in certain forceful entry techniques than you would with cutting it. Okay. Because they can actually repair for cheap. Because we don't want to, yeah. I mean, it's fun. You want to do the minimum. It's bottom. fun to destroy a door, but um, we try oh, and. The old battering ram is just try and hold on that style. I can see. The, the time is, uh, is of the essence. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be a nice prop. And you know, it's everybody says like three month build time. It's like hand built by artisans in Italy. Or Grove City. I'm not sure which one, but I think it was Grove City. Yeah, it's Grove City, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, alright, and then last but not least, uh, I mentioned the while back Ted. Ted Wasserman. Mm -hmm. Um Ted's working thirty six hours a week for us. Which makes him an Obamacare full, well, ACA full time guy, but short of, thank goodness, the 37 and a half. So he's covering a 24 hour shift every Wednesday when the other three guys are on their Kelly day. Uh, plus, he does one other 12 hour shift during the week. He works with Alex. Um, and I don't have anyone else who can take those slots, unfortunately. Brett and Evan are both happy doing one shift a week. And Ryan's already doing two, so if I give him an extra 12, then he gets help. Um, so Ted would like health insurance um, for him, not his family, because his children are covered. Um, and the money's already basically budgeted because we thought Jason would be here all year getting health insurance, but he left us. Mm -hmm. um, so he saved a little bit of money because Jason's been gone since August and we can take health insurance for him, so that's, that's something. And Alex isn't going to take health insurance because he's got some kind of catalog plan for his wife. So, um, and it's the same cost. It used to be, it used to be on a staggered thing by, mm -hmm. by age, and then yeah. apparently it's all the same. So, right yeah, it's all that same at the highest level of yeah. what the, what the first. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more than it was. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, it's like four hundred and fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and she was like, what are you nuts? <laughs> I didn't see that. No, she's that she thought it. <laughs> she thought it. Oh, <laughs> she threw a book at me. We but, can read your mind. But anyway, wow. so. I mean, we either have to give him the, the benefit or he perhaps cut his hours back because mm -hmm. he's over that 30 hour. I mean, until President Trump gets rid of that requirement, but that's, I think, the one in the ACA he hasn't got rid of yet. So, uh, Does this require action? I don't know. I would assume so. But I don't. I mean, at least a motion, I would think. Well, let's throw that out and see if we can get a motion from the floor. <laughs> from the floor? <laughs> I move, I move that we authorize uh, health insurance for our uh, new 36 hour employee. Does that mean he's going to become part of um, OPNF as well? No, because he's below the 37 and a half hours per Ooh. week. He, he'll basically be like Joe and Jason used to be before he we went to the 24 hour thing. I'm just 
Okay. 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 Okay.
As far as sale of cemetery lots, um, we're fourteen thousand dollars over budget. Yeah, twice what we budgeted. Wow. Well, I didn't sell yeah. a lot like that. <laughs> A lot of natural barriers. Well, real estate's been yeah. moving in Yellow Springs in general. I guess it must year. go right on down to the cemetery. Mark was asking me earlier um, do people share with you why they're interested in the natural burial section? Oh, a lot of them like it. And most of them are because of the, the energy cost, the, 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 the energy usage for uh, cremation and stuff. So it's mainly simple. Environmental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not, you know, the cost is lower. It's, it's, it's the minimum you can do yeah. right now. It's really an interesting. I get a lot of phone calls. Right? It's not just because they like the looks of the prairie grass and the. <laughs> well, no, but some of them do like that. Mm -hmm. You know, what I've been met with, they, they like it. I tell them, you know, it's, it's, it's how it looks all year. <laughs> <laughs> Most people they they come like and that. look before they right. buy. <clears throat> Yeah, pretty well this year. Last year was so nice looking after we burned it. I mean, it, it came out nice this year. <laughs> well, your prairie grass is pretty healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a good year for grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, because cool. we had burial this last Saturday, this past Saturday. We've got one Thursday and another Saturday of this week. Hmm. Came in today. Hmm. Thursday we're burying Betty Kirshner. Oh. Again. And we just buried Betty, one Betty Kirshner three weeks ago. This is a different Betty Kirshner. Mm -hmm. really? Jack, okay. there was Rick Richard, his wife, and now it's Jack's wife. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's when we got to go. I just buried her three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Kirshner somewhere. Some people are hard to keep down. Kind of kind of of odd, you know, two Betty Kirshners. This is a non Clint Forrest. Clint yeah. <laughs> and, uh, let's see. We've got one coming up the 20th and ashes in the ashes in the natural. It's still mm -hmm. So I've got a few bases to pour sometime between now and 15th, somewhere in there. At both places. Mm -hmm. Get them done. Are, are we current on our engraving for the memorial? You know, I, I, last time I talked to Larry, he said he'd get back to me and he hasn't. So I'm going to have to call and find out because I had a lady call the other day about that. Mm -hmm. Why they're not on there yet? I think the site may. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got a large Because I need. Yeah, that's good. I need to talk to Ann anyway and get a list of all the ones. Yeah, because I know that there's those two and and the reader gentleman. Reader. It seemed like you get on there. If you get on there, if you get on there. Oh, it's not on there yet either. No, no, no it's list. not. It's not on there. On there. It was on the list, right? Yeah. You, you might want to find out if they're actually doing that work in-house or they're... They are, and they changed, they, they changed. The guy that used to do it retired, and they've got oh. a new guy doing it now. He's just not up to speed? Evidently no. Well, they were only doing it either once a year at the most, or at the most twice a year. It, I mean, it wasn't, on a, it wasn't an on-demand thing. Mm -hmm. And everybody's... We'd let everybody know that... That, that it was going to be that It's going to be a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. They were pretty far behind. So he would come in if he had a list when he comes here, he'd probably do all the ones he has. Over there. Over there. I guess what matters is what's a, a large enough batch to make it worthwhile for him to yeah. process. Okay. That's all I have. That's all I have. Okay. Anything cemetery wise for? Oh, our like approach. Did you like our approach? I thought you did a nice job on the approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Some or the mm -hmm. that work? I saw it while it was happening. I haven't seen it. I haven't gone and looked at it since it was finished. A little bit smoother. It's been officially driven mm -hmm. over by... Yes, it is. By mm -hmm. So it works. <laughs> hey, <laughs> All right. What's the road action? Trying to finish up my trimming. So I can go along the road. I didn't. I didn't want to be able to get out yesterday. Um, I've got. I told you this morning. Let's see, Snip Houston, Larkins, mm -hmm. Tanner, Smithy. Okay. Larkins was all day off. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I feel the back pretty good this week. Back out tomorrow. You recall?
recall the trouble he was having with the, with the boom bar, uh, the hydraulic fittings, um, the hydraulic fittings breaking, and then the, the support arm, not arm, well, I guess it's a It supports arm. a cylinder to is, stabilize. Is that yeah. our equipment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's our equipment. So we repaired it again, and this time it seems to be working this way. Mm -hmm. There's a way around here. There's a lot of stress on that. Yeah, it is. Arm. You got 17 foot and five, you know, 400 pounds up here. Makes a big difference. But you think they're design engineers? No, you would think that it would be right. But on the it's with easy that. to see how it could break. They don't come out and watch. They just design them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't see what you do right. to their design. Right. right. Yeah. Let's see. We're shearing off these bolts at a pretty rapid rate. What, what can we do to why, 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 prevent that? Why? Oh, you're removing guardrails along with the vegetation? That may have something to do with it. <laughs> don't shh. <Yeah. laughs> don't come <laughs> down. If you get those mailboxes out of the way now, it won't be a problem. Yeah, it's much easier to move. <laughs> See, we've had some drainage issues in uh, our favorite every section of town. these issues. Roll along? Mm -hmm. Yes, I spoke with the gentleman. I'm going to have to dig up the pipe and it's obviously plugged up. This time it's farther down the road. Yeah. It's pretty simple, I hope. Mm -hmm. I hope too. It's just plugged up, it's coming up through the ground. You still got a bunch of pipe in the backyard? I got some back there. I hope I have it. I won't need much, I hope. Eight inch, that's eight inch pipe. Mm -hmm. I should have some back there. If not, I'll find some. Yeah, they make it. Yeah. That's about all I have. Anything for the road person? No. All right. Let's move on to the uh, fiscal officer's report. Um, I simply have yet another amendment of permanent appropriations, and that is resolution 2018-45, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amendments to the following of permanent appropriations. In the salary line item in the general fund for the fiscal officer, we increased that by $1,900 because I overpaid my finding for recovery and it's about that much money. Otherwise, it was perfectly uh, appropriate. <laughs> and, um, and the travel and meeting expenses in the general fund, I increased that by $200 because our trustees are busy going to meetings and it costs money. Traveling. Yes. In the cemetery fund, um, we had a water leak there for a minute, so. We still have a water leak there. Oh, well, I increased it by $25 thinking that was going to cover it for the rest of the year, but maybe not. Mm -hmm, anyway, not. and then in the fire fund, um, electricity was increased by $2,000. Just, the village bill is just, the so utility moved. bill for everybody, I mean, it's, yeah. I moved passages. Thank you. This resolution. I second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding that? You know, we need to um, closely watch the village bill for this potential water leak in the cemetery. Because mm -hmm. number one, it's not leaking much. And number two, the one bill that we got was for 3,000 gallons. And we yeah. never... Then we went back to normal. I, that's why that I was thought... A, wasn't that a catch-up bill? I talked to Johnny about that. And one, that we got a big bill. That was a catch-up for something. It was like they combined... From this point to this point, or something. I don't know. Because it wasn't just us. Uh, so there was a lot of people that got the same. Did they? Um, that's what he explained to me. He told me it was like that was built for this period or something. I wonder if it, they include sewer on that. Because if there's a. There's well, no sewer. There's no sewer. I know, but I wonder if they did. Now that I think, you know, I'm not. Yeah. I didn't well, you can look at the bill, it'll tell you. They itemize every. You know, they were itemizing, and they were breaking everything down like the. Just all kinds of different yeah. charges that made it all, and then this last bill, they got rid of all that, and it's one number again for your electric, one oh, number, really? number for your water and sewer, and one for your trash collection. But they were like, they had, they were breaking it down to all these other. Well, they expenses. had they had two things for water and two things for sewer. Right. And now they're they're not doing that. No, they've changed again. But, but anyway, still on the cemetery, there's still a line for sewer, right? You know, I don't. 
I have to look. I'll have to look again. I, I would say if there isn't one, just, then you're not being billed for sure. Right, but it's a good good question to check out. I think I would notice <coughs> that, but anyway. <coughs> Other than that, I'm good. Did we vote? Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. No. We didn't? We discussed, but we... Oh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Muter? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Thank you. I have... I think it would be appropriate to bring up under uh, fiscal officer. Okay. Give it a shot. Uh, in the category of new trustees learning curve, I just was noticing year-to-date percentages mm -hmm. um, on both expenditures and on revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, like our, we're only three quarters of the way through the year and we've already collected 105 percent of Property tax? That's all we're going to get. Okay. We get, so we get, we get paid that is, we only get paid twice? Correct. Okay. Um, but so that's, but, so we got our money. But there, interestingly, there are other categories like fees, 182%. Mm -hmm. um, local government distribution, is, are we done for the year? I think so. And that was only 86%. Right. Maybe not, actually. That comes, that comes separate from... Does it come, do you remember? Does it come quarterly or? I, I don't remember. I think. Um, it, I think. It, I don't remember. I, I'm just reviewing these, not to make a point, but just. Just kind of for you. Out of the question. Should you um, be concerned or not? Um, I was just wondering. Uh, yeah, and, and Don, while you're looking at this, um, you might see in the budget balance there's negatives on there, and those aren't. Those indicate that's how much more right. than what we budgeted. It's so actually positive. Actually, tomorrow, and I do this yes. um, occasionally through the year, is um, I'll send a, you said, there's a report you can fi you file with the county auditor's office to let them know that in the general mm -hmm. fund, basically, you know, I, I let them know how many more monies we have than what we budgeted, and then they'll authorize that as supplemental revenues, and then I adjust this, this report. And those negatives go away. Um, so I don't want to belabor line by line, but how the different taxes? Do those show up electronically, or do we get? No, we get a check. We get an actual check. And the, and the, uh, those like the motor vehicle license mm -hmm. tax, gasoline tax, mm -hmm. are those quarterly, monthly? No, they just they. they I, I they come a lot. <laughs> it comes regularly. Yeah, so it goes really up know, in the mail. <laughs> I, I don't really know. I really notice a, a you know a, um, a pattern. pattern, but there must be one. I don't know. Uh, and the, I this just was can't referred to earlier on the cemeteries. We're at two hundred and twelve percent of our estimated sales. Well, you, you never you know the thing about budgeting something like that is you just don't really know. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm just how many people this, are going to die. This is just <laughs> in the well, how many people are going to be you, planted here. Yeah. I mean, you just don't know, so we go conservative. Um, and, um, you know, most of the budget, you know. most of the interest lines in different accounts are like at four hundred percent. Well, that is due to the um, increase. The, the, yeah, yeah, the levy that we passed. So that's a oh. chunk of change, and it's bringing it. Well, no, some of these aren't. You know, <coughs> some of these aren't anything to do with the levy. I don't think. You're right. Anyway, um. But under expenditures, uh, I mean, we're all over the map from uh, but mainly, are there any that we should be worried about every month you this happens a lot at the end you of the year. make adjustments yeah, and, that, that, and I know is, that <coughs> some of you are oh, I'm still wrapping my mind around. How much are we spending on roads? How much do we? Uh, and is there anything in here that we are should be surprised by and haven't paid attention to as we as we scan the year-to-date expenditure percentages? Well, I try and watch them 
uh, each meeting. Uh, I review each and every one, and I, I have a fairly good idea of where they should be at any particular time during the year. And we consistently uh, are pretty close to uh, where we should be. For the majority, I like that. Like we're at 94 percent for uh, in the general fund for trustee salaries. Yeah. Instead of 75 percent. Well, we take it from we're taking it from different sources too. Well, yeah. the reason okay. why you're currently why you see see ninety five percent is because because I, there was a check cut for Mr. Crockett oh, right for the finding for recovery as well. Okay. So that pretty much took you know used up all the money. Yeah, so it's not that far off though. Uh, I mean, you know, it was it was on it was spot on until until that happened. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, next meeting there'll be a, a, a supplemental appropriation. There will be, yeah. Uh, so basically, you guys are saying, um, you know, it's, it's fine for you to be concerned, but there's no emergency. Because this is the time of year to be, begin to get nervous if there was a problem with cash flow versus. I'll let you know. Okay. We're good. You, we're, we're no, yeah, we're good. End, we're end pretty of, good. End of questions. Back in the olden days, we weren't so good. Today yeah, we're good. Uh, there, we're, we're getting a handle on things. There is something, and I don't, I don't know if it's important because I don't think, as it's, it's, it's Margaret and Chris have pointed out, there's essentially not a problem based on the people who are, have lots of experience with this. But I've worked with budgets that, that instead of having that column saying, you know, what percentage of the funds have been been used because because the percentages the income and outgo aren't always evenly spread out during the year mm -hmm. there's where are we in relationship to where we were last year at this point you know are we have we spent a lot more than we did last year in you know by october or a lot less and sometimes that's a better kind of a warning for things that that don't happen evenly throughout the year well i'm not going to ask for that i just Different funds, yeah. I'm just different, bringing up the question. Different expenditures mm -hmm. and needs and fluctuations. So, <clears throat> just keep on reading those. Because Thank you we... for answering my questions. Sure. Yeah. For example, <clears throat> if it's first of October and our line items for operating supplies, <laughs> let's just say for the road, and there's different operating supplies that could be for the motor vehicle license fund, the permissive motor vehicle license fund, the gasoline tax, and the road. Uh, road bridge fund itself, but if, if every dime of operating supplies in all of those funds that are listed were, were maxed out, yeah, we want to, you know, say what's, you know, what's going on. You know, oh, Dan's not buying any more supplies for the rest of the year? <laughs> or, you know, why do you yeah. buy so much? Or what's the deal? And we're going to have to address this next year. Uh, but if the, all those funds are generally running at about, I forget where, we, where it should be, right, 80 percent, you know, this time of year is about 80 percent. You know, electricity. You know, if it's about 80 percent, telephone. If it's about 80 percent, then we're pretty much on, on track. Uh, insurance. We probably only paid it once a year. It's going to be 100 percent at this point. Uh, you know, you get after a while. You get. It, it, you know, if you watch every one of these lines all the time, you get to, to remember yeah. which ones well, should be maxed we out. We do have and which one literally better. 100 lines here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Takes a little. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you remember from the old days uh, of yore, the village had probably 300 lines. Mm -hmm. You ever look at the, oh yeah, at the county? If you ever look at the county budgets, and, <laughs> and we did for a while because I was mad about the money they were spending. Oh my God, they got like 4,000 lines of expenditure lines. You know, so you know, it's just five different executives. Yeah, so it's uh, you know, it's just this the scale of the work. Anyway, I, I don't want to belabor it. Belabor it. Well, well, thank you. Anyway. So shall we move on to? Uh, uh, inspector's office. Sure. Um, the, the issue, the important issue I want to bring before the trustees is I've got a, uh, a request for a variance, which means I need to convene the BZA, and I only have four BZA members, and I've called all four, and after five days I've only gotten responses from two of them, one of which has been a negative. So if I, I've got to find the other two 
And I've got to get them both in order to have the BZA meeting. Mm -hmm. you did, uh, did, I did take a call from a gentleman today. Is it, did he call you? Any it's gentleman. A, I, had, I had a call from Chuck Kimball today. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave him your number and, you know. Okay, he so left a message one. here. Yeah, well, I, I called everybody and asked them to call me at, at home, but you know, that doesn't mean it always happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm sure this will work out one way or another, but we're, we're down one BZA member, and we have another BZA member who's only in the area six months of the year. And, and Kathy is perfectly willing to resign if you want her to, but... You know she's not going. She's not going to stop. You know going to Florida or whatever. You asked, yeah, well, the you asked me to work on another <coughs> BZA member. I have a name in mind, but I have not talked to him. I suspect he will say yes. But yes. Right. Anyway, so, so that's <laughs> well. It's a, it's a yes, little bit critical. He agrees. Doesn't mean that we're going to appoint him. Though. Okay. I'm not going to say his name. Do this one time. The Zoning Commission tried to meet in September, but they didn't have a quorum. So nothing's, nothing's happened on that front, and I have not issued any, any permits. And I tried to issue one for this building, but it turned out to be a variance. Is, it, is the variance <laughs> difficult? Is it going to be a difficult problem? I don't think so. The, the situation is, if, if you think about the properties in Miami Township that are zoned residential that have homes on them, as opposed to some speculative kinds of, mm -hmm. of zoning, they're generally, you know, three acres or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. This is an 11 acre parcel mm -hmm. residential, and they would like to build an accessory structure that is taller than what our code allows in a residential zone. Mm -hmm. and it's my feeling that it's, it's a legitimate variance from the standpoint of that their situation, their lot, is significantly different than the average person's. <laughs> they have room to do it without having a bad impact on their neighbors. So that's, but you know, it's clear that the code, there's no wiggle room on, on the height of an accessory structure in the residential district. And um, they didn't, I mean, yes, they could still, maybe accomplish the, the critical thing that they wanted with a big building, but um, with a new design, and maybe they'll go that direction. But I said, well, you can ask for a variance, and that I, I didn't think it would be ridiculous to ask for a variance. All right, well, good, good. It doesn't sound like something that's going to require lawyers and studio lights and recordings. No, and if we can get members. three people together <laughs> wow. to officially do it, I would not know as right. smooth <laughs> as could be. But um, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? No. Anything else for inspectors off? Um, oh, let me throw out one other thing. I'm sorry. I think when you said anything else, and, and I don't think of this as a zoning issue, but this is where we've talked about it. As we're, most of us are aware that, that Chrissy Spackland has been very concerned about, about solar um, arrays in her neighborhood. Well, I just had a conversation with another homeowner who is, if this goes through, the adjoining property to her home has already been committed. And she will, she is one of those homes that's been cut out of the farmer's field. So she will have solar array on three sides of her house and, and correspondingly chain link fence and all, and saying, you know, this is really yucky, so to speak. And, and I said, yes, but at this point, I don't, you know, short of convincing those people that could provide the extra three or four hundred acres that they're looking for not to make a lease, I don't know of anything you can do about it. But there's a, you know, a kind of straight in your face. It's not just not my backyard. It's a little more than it is in your backyard. Side it yard. is in your backyard. Well, it's in every yard, and it's it's not something that you you you're going to just get used to. I think. Or at least not as easily. So that, uh, you know, I'm wondering if... Uh, I'm going to bring up this topic. On the new, new, business. New, new business. Okay. Well, anyway, so enough for, for the for the zoning inspector. <laughs> Perfect segue. <laughs> well, we have my setup for Trick. <laughs> All right. So now we've moved along from zoning. Uh, standing committee reports next meeting. Hmm. 
new business. Mm -hmm. uh, Is there new business? I, I would like us to invite Dale Arnold. He said he would come to our meeting. I, I said maybe we can arrange you coming to a, a township association meeting. Or, and he said, I'll come up. yes, but I, I'm happy to come to, you know, to your meeting. To, to your, just talk to three trustees. Um, I would like to invite him to our next meeting. Uh, we could put a you know 15 minute time limit or something like that. I don't have to get a lecture from him. Um, that's one item. And the other is I sent, it, I emailed all of you just a link from the extension service, OSU extension service, uh, with a string of bits about uh, solar farm leases and uh, I would like to uh, get that information to uh, farmers in our township. Mm -hmm. And I think we're talking, you know, 30 or 40 people. It's not, not a huge list. And I mean, I could do that personally, mm -hmm. but I would rather do it uh, with township letterhead. Uh, the, it, it would print out the information on the link with sort of, it's sort of a checklist about things to consider on a lease. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm not even sure it's paid. It may not jump to your mind when you yeah. see all those um, big numbers. So, so we would be talking stamps, a piece of letterhead, uh, a printout from that link, and I would do the addressing. Uh, are folks comfortable with that? I, mean, I, would not, I would not be creating any, mm -hmm. you know, it wouldn't be my opinion, it would be yeah. something from Ohio State. Right. I mean, we can cough up 30 stamps. <laughs> okay, then. Sure. Right. I think it's in the budget. Yeah. I'll do that. <coughs> you want to write a letter? I'll do I'll that. What? One, one way or another, I'll, I'll work on that later this week I, to get it out. You know, I, I can help address envelopes. I have decent handwriting. She does, I think. I don't. I've seen mine. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. um, so, oh, I guess you, you've got very specific people. I was going to say, you know, when I send out a notice, um, you know, I can use the, the, the GIS to tell me all the addresses within a certain distance. Um, well, and what I, was I get gonna, those all printed out and I just... What I was going to do was going to call, Tecumseh Land Trust has a list of all the, quote, farmers in the county. And I was going to abstract from that. Uh, so it wouldn't be so much property owners, it would be, be people with sizable plots. Yeah, no, I, I know, I realize it wouldn't be every, every property owner. <coughs> um, so those, you, you said yes to the mailing, oh. and then also yes to the inviting Dale Arnold. And you know, very likely he can't come to our next meeting, but Is he a solar whatever line? meeting he can show up at. I would just be, I'd be interested to, to hear or to know what he thinks, I mean, you had mentioned in the email that he believes we would have a seat at the table. Um, I don't know what table you're talking about, and I don't know how big a seat. Well, others, uh, someone else I spoke with said, well, with all the, he must be talking about just being able to speak at a... Uh, PUC OED or um, like that? Citing, Ohio Citing, or... The siding, power siding board, but he was uh, he was eager. He said townships don't know about this option, and they're being passive. And uh, I would like to come. You know, Richard brought up the last time uh, we met just the the whole idea of you know what is the appropriate use of agricultural land and. You know how how best to use it and personal property rights and uh, you know and all of those sorts of things. Um, so I, I'm not sure I've developed an actual stand as a board member uh, on this issue. So more information is appropriate. Yeah. Well, and remind. I mean, we at the table may know, but just to say, Dale Arnold 
uh, is a longtime Farm Bureau staffer. Mm -hmm. uh, and he works on energy issues. Uh, and also, they're, uh, he's, they have, I think they call them community councils anyway. It's sort of semi informal fellowship groups of members uh, at a neighborhood level. I think there's one on Cedarville, but that's an aside. He, he does a lot of work with farms, not just policy. So uh, your question is whether we are in favor of his coming? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he would be coming as information, not advocacy. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, the other man I talked to at the Farm Science Review did not offer to come, but uh, he's the one who gave me his links about uh, from the ex from the extension service, and he works for the extension service. Uh, and he pointed out that there are ways of having a solar farm that are more farm-like. That is, you don't have to have the same kind. Of, it doesn't have to be a chain-link fence with barbed wire. Uh, you can, and they're now finding that simply having gravel under it actually is a problem because it increases the heat and decreases the efficiency of the panels. Um, that maybe it could be pasture. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, he said it's an evolving um, uh, practice. Okay. Anyway, okay. thank you. Thank you. Extend. We'll do the mailing and we'll extend Ex the extend invitation. Extend the invitation and we'll see where that goes. Mm -hmm. If I may just say, it seems like if this is something that this Mr. Arnold said is townships aren't really uh, maybe not quite inform informed very much, you know, and are, are in a passive state right now, probably because they don't know that much. It seems like you may have a better, you may have a more effective audience if you went to a town, do a township, you know, the Reed County Township yes, Association so meeting where you're going to reach uh, more people than. I, well, Lord he, knows I agree. Know. He did a two-hour presentation at the last hit. Oh, he two, did? Two, oh, two well, meetings ago. Never mind. Included some solar. I don't remember. Two, about two years years I remember he came early. Mm -hmm. I remember that was an off. That was a long. That was two years ago? No, two months ago. Oh, okay. It was in July. Okay, never mind. I didn't know that. But he didn't talk specifically about, or did he? He, he did. did. talk about, okay. Yeah, he, he did talk about solar farms. Uh, okay, if, you're, if you're successful with your invitation and it's and it's the second meeting of the month, would you let me know? Yes. Because otherwise, I, would, I I am interested to hear what he has to say as, as well. The other thing that occurs to me on making your list or possibly getting printed addresses, if you don't want to write out the envelopes, is is have the the GIS system do a search for you of everybody that see in UP in the township. Okay. Because they won't have it if they're not farming. Mm -hmm. And there's unusual farmers that wouldn't have it if they were. True. All right. Any other new business this evening? Any old business that we haven't covered in one way, shape, or form? Here we go. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Mr. Crack moves. Mr. Hollister will second. Second. And we will adjourn. Mr. Zahn, go to the speak. Thank you. <coughs> Richard, don't walk out the door yet. Okay. I'm not, not actually in the rapid oh. movement. No. no.